Well, welcome everyone again. October, it's a new month. That means a new affirmation. And so what we like to do here, of course, is do our affirmations three times. But we don't just repeat them, do we? We put movement into them, feeling into them. And so it's a new affirmation, and we can get some new movements going on. If you will join with me in saying our affirmations, and let's kind of move around with that. I am prosperous, abundant, and fulfilled. Yay. All right. I am prosperous, abundant, and fulfilled. One more time. I am prosperous, abundant, and fulfilled. Wonderful. It is. It is our theme this month is God's power of abundance. Now, the Bible is full of stories and teachings about prosperity and about the flow of abundance. And um, of course, Jesus, who was the greatest example of uh, this power. He lived this power. He taught it. And he had his disciples go out and teach it. But one of his greatest apostles, Paul, was not his greatest apostle to begin with, was he? No, because his name was Saul. And Saul, well, Saul was kind of one of those soul-sucking persecutors of the new Christian communities, wasn't he? But something happened with Saul. Saul had a transformation. He had this moment where he connected to the Christ within him, and then that transformed him. But before that transformation, he persecuted people who did not have the same beliefs, who did not follow the same belief system. And the Christians who were following the way, because that's what it was called originally, were being mercifully persecuted. They were small, just little pockets here and there. And they didn't follow what the majority was following. They had found a different way. Sounds kind of familiar, huh? Persecutions. And they needed to, when Paul had this transformation, he became this voice of strength for these communities. He went from persecuting to them to being the one who really spread the teachings of Jesus because they were struggling in some of these communities. Not unlike some of the things we are seeing today. Some of them didn't have hope. They doubted. They were trying to live this path, but they struggled with this. And so in one of his letters, he talks to them and reminds them about this power, this power of God. And in the city of Corinth, he writes to the community there, the Corinthians, and in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, 8, you will find, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Wow, think about that. God's power of abundance. At all times, in all things. Do you feel that in your life right now? Do you feel that with every fiber of your being right now? Think about it a minute. That power of abundance, that flow. I'll give you a second. Think about it. Right now I know this. Right this moment I know it, I feel it. But if you'd asked me a couple of days ago, yeah, not so much. I wasn't feeling it, I wasn't showing it, and I certainly wasn't living it. 
So why is that? What causes that? That feeling of separation, that void in our life. For some of you, when you thought about your life for that moment, did you think about everything that wasn't in it? Because sometimes that's where we tend to go. We think about what's lacking or, or the things that we want that we don't have. Or maybe for a brief, brief moment, you thought about the mistakes in your life, the mistakes you made with your children, your parents, your coworkers, the marriage, the job, your breakfast choice, all the little things. Maybe some of you did think about the good, about all the good things that have happened in your life. And you want more of that. And you want more of that more consistently. These are all questions I've asked myself, and I asked myself a lot this week, let me tell you. But more importantly than the questions, really, is how are you answering those questions? How are you living the answers to the questions? Because that kind of guides us. So if you're not sure about it, we look at our life. How are you defining, defining prosperity? How are you defining that flow of abundance? Charles Fillmore, our co-founder of the Unity Movement, defines prosperity as the consciousness of God, as the abundant, everywhere present resource, unfailing, ready for all who open themselves to it through faith. And he states in his book about prosperity, what we need to realize above all else is that God has provided for the most minute needs of our daily life. And then if we lack anything, it is because we have not used our mind in making the right contact with the supermind and the cosmic ray that automatically flows from it. I just love the way he talks, that cosmic ray. So how do we connect to that? How do we connect to the flow of abundance in our life? Well, the operative word is connection, isn't it? Because we humans have that need to connect. And how we connect to ourselves and to others, or don't connect, or how we don't connect can govern and direct the experiences of our life, either, either to our detriment or to our upliftment, that connection. But more than this, there is something within each of us that wants to connect to an inner presence, that higher power, to that God self, that Christ within us. It's that connection. So how do we connect? When the scripture I read earlier, it gives us clues. Remember Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Well, the city of Corinth lies west of Athens, about 40 miles or so. And in that city was the Greek temple of Venus. And we know what Venus is. Venus was dedicated to the worship of love. And so metaphysically, when we look at that, we know that love center is the consciousness that the truth can, sought to do its work there. So Paul represents the truth. And Corinth is the love center. So your power of love is your connection to that flow of abundance. Mm -hmm. It is that abundance connection. We've been studying in um, the Sunday school class, but, but Eric Butterworth discovered the power within you. And in one of the chapters, I like to look for outside um, materials to support what I'm teaching in that class. And I ran across this. I've had it for years. But I've never actually read it. You can see, see like, how shiny it is. And it's called The Abundance Book by John Randolph Price, 
who was an international speaker and author of more than 18 books. John Randolph Price used to speak at many Unity churches. He studied the film wars and he studied um, Ernest Holmes and other spiritual new thought mystics. And he had left his corporate world and decided he needed something more in his life. And he was starting this new foundation. And him and his wife, Jan, were struggling. They were having some difficulties, some financial and other difficulties. And he goes to bed one night. And he said he has this dream that this old, ancient man, he, said, he was really old, really old. And he comes up to his bed. And he says, John, if you would only love more, every limitation of, in your life would vanish. Every limitation. So he wakes up the next morning, he goes, you know, he wakes his wife up and he says, I think of myself as a loving man. I left the corporate world to study, to, to build a foundation on spiritual principles. And his wife says, well, you know what, John? Let's set an intention. Let's make a commitment to love, pour our love into everything, everything. They woke up. They got out of bed. They loved their bed. They loved their shower. He says they loved their refrigerator. They loved their coffee. They loved their ceilings. They loved their floors. <laughs> but he didn't stop there. He loved everyone. He loved everyone he met, everyone that he heard over the TV. And he poured that love, they, the both of them, poured that love into themselves. They made that intention and commitment for seven days. And he says, and in three weeks, it was like the curtain parted and things started to flow. They got a phone call from someone in New York who wanted them to do a, a workshop. His wife says, well, we don't do workshops. And the caller says, well, you do now. <laughs> So they go to New York, they do the workshop, and that opened up a whole new journey for them. Through that opening up, connecting to that divine love within them, their life transformed in big ways. But it wasn't just a transformation for themselves, it is how that radiated out and how they touched other people with that energy of divine love. You see, things don't appear in our outer world, do they? Until they first appear in our inner world. As within, so without. As within. So awareness, understanding and knowing that God is our lavish, unfailing abundance. He is a that that God within us is that rich, omnipresent substance of all of the universe. The more we practice the presence, the more it becomes the reality of who we are. The more we practice that divine love, the more it becomes the reality of who we are. And that changes our experience, that connects us. We start connecting. Once we connect inside, we start connecting to other people. And that starts to change. Paul. Paul changed his world. He went from being Saul to Paul. He connected with the Christ within. And the communities were, were building that energy of love that he connected with, that faith that grew. when we realize the presence of God within us, that real, realization is the spiritual experience. So how do we get into that flow? How do we step into that flow of abundance? Well, we set an intention to love. We pour our love into everything. We find the joy, the love in everything and everyone and in ourselves. Because love connects us to the source. Because God is love. 
And then we take the second step to make a choice, a commitment to our intention. And we do that with dedication and discipline. And for many of us in unity, that is our daily prayer and meditation. That is how this movement started. Myrtle, in a moment, heard something that changed her. Myrtle Fillmore. And she made an intention to live her life in love, and she disciplined herself. Every night, she would pray, go into prayer and meditation, and that, that moment that changed her turned into a movement, a unity movement, did it not? So when we dedicate and discipline ourselves, changes can happen. The next thing, we have to accept that. We have to own it. We gotta feel it, people. We gotta feel it. And we give praise and thanksgiving for it, don't we? Thank you is always enough, isn't it? Thank you. We don't have to do big, grand prayers. It is our going within, knowing that we are grateful. We don't have to prove it to anyone, but that gratitude changes who we are. And we get to that gratitude through loving, through that divine love, and then we live it. We become it, we live it, we speak it, we are it. So, Carla Cargill of the Financial Truth states, if the world will become as focused on the wealth of love as it is the wealth of money, then hatred, racism, and bigotry would cease. Poverty would be no more. Gun violence would no longer have ammunition. Terrorism would no longer cause terror. And the love of God will be the abundance that flows freely from continent to continent and throughout the universe. Your inner presence, your power of love, is the abundance connection. Choose to be it. So stay tuned this month as Reverend Anna leads us more into God's power of abundance. So thank you and namaste. When you walk through the storm